William Jefferson Bill Clinton was the 43rd American president, presiding over the country for eight years from 1993 to 2001. He is the third youngest president to hold office behind Theodore Roosevelt and John F. Kennedy. Clinton was a very popular president who led the country during one of the most successful eras in American history. His economic policies contributed greatly to the country's economic strength during his tenure. Clinton is a member of the Democratic Party and served as governor of the state of Arkansas for two five-year terms. He is credited with overhauling the state's education system during his tenure. Clinton presided over the longest peacetime economic expansion in American history. He is married to Hillary Clinton, who he met at Yale Law School. Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State from 2009 to 2013, after serving as Senator of the State of New York from 2001 to 2009. Additionally, Hillary Clinton is considered one of the top prospects to gain the Democratic nomination for the presidential election in 2016. When Bill Clinton left office in 2001, he enjoyed the highest approval rating from the American public in the history of the United States, but his presidency was not without controversy. Bill Clinton's presidency was marred by the Monica Lewinsky affair. Lewinsky was a White House intern who engaged in sexual activity with the president. Bill Clinton denied any wrongdoing, but his political opponents, the Republicans, pursued Clinton in an effort to damage his reputation and the Democratic Party in general. Republican politicians tried to have Clinton impeached from office and dogged him for years. In the end, Clinton survived the controversy and completed his successful term as president. Hillary stood by him during the dark times and the couple remains together to this day. The greatest boxer of the modern era is Muhammad Ali. There is generally no question about this in the boxing circles. However, there are those who would argue that there are some others who are just as great. Ali was born in Louisville, Kentucky and was first called Cassius Marcellus Clay Jr., but changed his name in the late 1960s after adopting Islam as his religion. Ali was not only one of the greatest heavyweight boxers ever to step into the ring, but also a deeply spiritual person who defied the United States government by standing on his ethics. He was a controversial and divisive man who elicited great emotion from those who loved him and those who wanted him jailed. Ali was on top of his profession in the late 1960s when his draft classification was changed. He was ordered to enlist in the army, but he refused. He claimed that he could not go to war because of his religious convictions. Many saw this move by the U.S. government as a way to silence the outspoken boxer because he was well beyond the age most American men were being drafted at the time. Ali was stripped of his title and was banned from boxing. While his case went through the U.S. Supreme Court system, Ali was inactive during his ableist years from age 25 to almost 29. There is no telling how many more victories and titles he would have won during his stolen prime. Eventually, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in an 8-0 decision in Ali's favor, overturning his conviction of draft evasion. His stance was not popular at the time among conservative Americans. Many people dislike him very much but his determination and moral principles held up his decision. He is now regarded as one of the most influential persons in the history of the U.S. He was named Sportsman of the Country by Sports Illustrated magazine and Sports Personality of the Century by the BBC. There was a time in the United States when black people were not allowed to play the game of baseball with white players. That was before the great Jackie Robinson broke what was called the color line in baseball. Prior to April 15, 1947, Major League Baseball was an exclusive whites-only organization that barred black players from participation. Black Americans could only play in the Negro Leagues that existed roughly between 1920 through 1948, 
Robinson and the Brooklyn Dodgers put an end to segregation in baseball that year and began a movement for racial equality in the United States. Robinson was born in Cairo, Georgia on January 31, 1919, but grew up in Pasadena, California near Los Angeles. He was an outstanding athlete who played baseball and football for Pasadena City College, then at the University of California at Los Angeles, UCLA. During his time with the Dodgers, the team won one championship and appeared in the World Series six times. From 1949 to 1954, Robinson was named to the All-Star team and he won the National League Most Valuable Player Award. He was also named the Baseball Rookie of the Year in 1947, the first year the award was given. Today, Robinson is honored by every team in both the National and American Leagues on Jackie Robinson Day. On that day, all MLB players wear the number 42 in honor of Robinson. That number, used to be worn by Robinson, was retired universally by all baseball teams, making it the first time any league has retired a number. No player on any MLB team can ever wear that number again. Robinson was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1962. He died on October 24, 1972, and was posthumously awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom and Congressional Gold Medal for his part in changing American society. One of the most divisive eras in American history is the Vietnam era. The Vietnam era for the United States ran roughly from 1960 through 1975. In the mid to late 1960s, America's involvement became a huge issue. The conflict in Vietnam was divisive for many reasons, but mostly because of the public's perception that it was an immoral and illegal operation. The other major factor was that the U.S. was still engaged in drafting young men into the service of the country against their will. One of Hollywood's major film stars at the time was Jane Fonda. Fonda came from Hollywood movie royalty, being the daughter of the great actor Henry Fonda. She won two Oscars, seven Golden Globe Awards, and an Emmy Award through her long career. In the 60s, she was a political activist who was against the war in Vietnam. She was very outspoken against the conflict, as many celebrities were at the time. In 1970, Fonda made headlines for a very different reason. She and two fellow actors starred in an anti-war film that drew much controversy. In July of 1972, Fonda drew the wrath of many Americans when she was photographed sitting with North Vietnamese army members on an anti-aircraft gun. That image soiled her reputation as an actress and as a true American. Many called Fonda a traitor for interacting with the enemy. Years later, Fonda said that she was manipulated into taking that photo, but many Americans still have their doubts. During her trip to North Vietnam, which was at war with the U.S. back South Vietnam, Fonda made a number of radio broadcasts denouncing America's involvement in the war. This further cemented her image as a traitor. However, there are many Americans who feel she was a true patriot because she refused to stand still and spoke out against the war. Oprah Winfrey is one of the most successful women in the history of the United States of America. Winfrey was born in a small town in Mississippi in 1954 into a poor family. She is now one of the richest people in the world and one of the richest black Americans in the country. She was also named as the richest African American in the 20th century. Winfrey is known to most Americans through her daytime television show called The Oprah Winfrey Show. Her show is very popular among television viewers because she likes to tackle the tough issues many other daytime TV hosts avoid. Winfrey's early life was difficult. She lived with her mother and grandmother at times. While living with her grandmother, she learned to read by the age of three and had memorized many Bible passages. Her mother was an unwed teenager at the time of her birth and had a difficult time of raising her. Winfrey had two half-sisters. One died young as a result of cocaine addiction, 
and she did not learn about her other sister until 2010. Winfrey also was not certain who her father was. Winfrey suffered from sexual abuse from her uncle, cousin, and family friend and became pregnant at 14. She lost her baby shortly after birth though. Winfrey survived her early years and at 17 won a local beauty contest before getting her first break in the media industry as a radio newscaster. This was her first step into the media market. Her show began in Chicago in 1983, and within a few years it became the number one daytime talk show in the country. She has interviewed some of the most famous people in the country on her popular show. Winfrey starred in the movie The Color Purple, and now owns her own production company called Harpo Films. She is a philanthropist who is famous for her generosity and remains one of the most influential Americans in the country. Van Halen is to rock and roll as Cadillac is to automobiles. It is one of the most popular bands ever to perform in the country and is still going strong 40 years later. It is known as one of the best bands ever to come from a garage band background. Founded by brothers Eddie and Alex Van Halen in their home in Pasadena, California in 1972, the band was one of the top rock acts in the country and is as popular today as it was back then. Eddie Van Halen is considered one of the best guitarists in the history of music by many of his peers, while Alex was a superior drummer. Together, they formed the nucleus of the popular band that also included bass guitarist Michael Anthony and vocalist David Lee Roth. The brothers were born in the Netherlands and immigrated to the United States when they were children. The two were inseparable and developed an interest in music in the mid-60s. They formed the band in 1972 using the name Genesis. They later changed the name to Mammoth when Eddie discovered Genesis was already in use. Eventually, they renamed the band Van Halen. According to popular legend, Van Halen was discovered by Gene Simmons of the rock band Kiss while they were performing at Gazzari's on the Strip, a popular spot for heavy metal rock bands in the 70s. They continued to play at gigs throughout Southern California when they released their self-titled debut album, Van Halen, in 1978. The album peaked at number 19 on the Billboard list, and the band never looked back. Van Halen's greatest commercial success was from 1978 through 1985, but their albums continued to sell. It has garnered a cult-like following from several younger generations of American rock and roll fans. There is perhaps no greater mystery in the annals of American history as that of the Amelia Earhart story. Earhart's story is one of controversy and intriguing. She was an accomplished aviator, the first woman to fly across the Atlantic Ocean solo. She accomplished this during a time when women were not highly regarded in the United States. American women during the 1930s did not have the same advantages men had. There were few employment opportunities. Educated women were a scarcity. Women who did find employment during this era were working as grade school teachers, nannies, and maids for the most part. Amelia Earhart did a lot to change that perception. Although Earhart was born into a family that did see financial success, that success was fleeting. There were times in her life when her family struggled to make ends meet because of poor money management. Earhart was homeschooled for most of her life, and she gained her pilot's license at an early age. In December of 1920, Earhart's father took Amelia to an air show in Long Beach, California. This is where she first became interested in flying. After earning her aviator's license, she accomplished a feat that only a few men had ever done flying solo across the Atlantic. She earned national fame for this and was soon a household name. Tragically, Earhart lost in an attempt to fly around the world in 1937. She was never found. The theories about how she met her end are countless. 
many think she fell victim to the Japanese prior to the start of World War II. This thinking was rooted in the idea that Earhart was a spy. Other outlandish theories include alien kidnapping, but most likely she had mechanical difficulties flying over the Pacific Ocean. Earhart was either killed instantly or survived according to one popular theory and lived out her days on a deserted island. Beyonce Knowles is an American singer, songwriter, and performer who was born in Houston, Texas in 1981. She is one of the biggest female stars on the American music scene today. Knowles began her singing career in her hometown of Houston as a child. She was encouraged by her parents to cultivate her musical talents, and her parents are still a big part of her life. Her father serves as her personal manager, while her mother designs many of the costumes she wears on her concert tours and in her music videos. She first found fame as a member of the R&B group Destiny's Child, which was one of the most popular girl groups in the history of American music. Beyonce began her solo career during her time with Destiny's Child. After their breakup in 2005, the artist went completely solo. She found instant success in the music industry because of her unbridled enthusiasm for her work. She is a tireless worker and a talented musician. Knowles is also one of the most beautiful women in the music industry. Beyonce won her first award at the age of seven while in elementary school. By the age of eight, Beyonce, along with two childhood friends, auditioned for an all-girls group. The group won the competition and was featured on Star Search, a popular American talent search show of the time. Although the group did not win the Star Search competition, Beyonce and the original members of Destiny Child had their start. Some of Beyonce's biggest hits were Deja Vu, Irreplaceable, and Beautiful Liar. She has won many awards, including nine American Music Awards, 16 BET Awards, and 18 Billboard Music Awards. In all, Beyonce has won more than 262 awards and has been nominated for 361. Carl Sagan was possibly the most famous American astronomer ever. He was an astronomer, scientist, author, cosmologist, and television host. His landmark show, Cosmos, was one of the first science shows to gain acceptance by the general public in the United States. Sagan challenged Americans to think about their place in the universe like no other person before him. Using the scientific method, Sagan challenged long-held beliefs about the genesis of life on Earth. This he has done to the enlightened scientific community and to the anger of the religious community. Many of Sagan's teachings contradict the creationist belief of the beginning of life. He was also interested in the search for life beyond the planet Earth and participated in the only human message sent into space intended for an alien race. Sagan was born in Brooklyn, New York, on November 9, 1934. His interest in science began at an early age. He wrote and co-authored 20 books and had more than 600 scientific research papers published. His most popular work was Contact, which tells the story of first contact with an intelligent alien species. The book was made into a movie in 1997 starring Jodie Foster. The book and movie angered many religious groups because of its message that human beings are not alone in the universe. Sagan earned his bachelor's degree and master's degree in physics from the University of Chicago in the 1950s. His scientific curiosity led him into developing the television series Cosmos. It was one of the most watched science series and has been recreated and is currently on the air. His work on the Galileo project lives on today. The spacecraft is speeding its way through infinite space today with his message of greeting to whatever race of beings finds it. Sagan died at the age of 62 from complications resulting from pneumonia. 
Forrest Gump is a 1994 film depicting the life of a simple Alabama-born man who achieves great success in life despite being mentally slow. The lead character is played by the great Tom Hanks, who is involved in many of the most significant moments in American history. The film and character have become iconic figures in American society because of its message that any feat can be accomplished no matter what obstacles are faced. Gump was born to a single mother in rural Alabama during the 1950s. He is a slow-witted boy who seems unaware of his surroundings or purpose in life. A school counselor tells his mother Gump's IQ is so low that he would need to be placed into a special vocational program. His mother convinces the counselor to disregard Gump's low IQ score. Forrest is allowed to attend a regular public school. Because of his athletic ability, Gump gets a scholarship to play football at the University of Alabama, where he excels at the game. Upon graduation, he is approached by an army recruiter and joins the military, where again he excels. Gump is awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for saving the lives of many of his fellow troops during a vicious firefight in the Vietnam War. After his time in the service, Gump wins an international ping pong competition in China, brings down President Nixon while staying at the infamous Watergate Hotel, meets three presidents, and goes on several cross-country runs that gain massive media attention. Throughout his life, Gump maintains a solid relationship with his friends from the army and dearly loves his only childhood friend and sweetheart, Jenny. Forrest Gump touches the American spirit like no other film ever has. Charles Lindbergh is an American hero who took the nation and the world by storm as a 25-year-old pilot in 1927. That was the year Lindbergh flew from New York City to Paris across the Atlantic Ocean solo. Aviation technology was not very advanced during that time period. Lindbergh's plane, the Spirit of St. Louis, was believed by many to be simply too small to make the solo flight across the Great Atlantic. Just carrying enough fuel for the flight was a challenge, and so was the trip itself. Because of the limitations on the speed of the aircraft at the time, it would take many hours to make the trip. It was generally accepted that a pilot could not make it alone. Lindbergh would not be deterred, though. Lindbergh was working as a mail pilot when he decided to make his cross-Atlantic flight. Six well-known and trained aviators had lost their lives trying to make the flight before him, so his odds for success were not in his favor. On the morning of May 20, 1927, Lindbergh launched his small plane from Roosevelt Field in New York and determined to reach Paris. The flight was an international event as Lindbergh's progress was reported by report stations throughout his flight. Lindbergh faced many dangers and challenges during his flight, including foul weather and flying blind through thick fog. He also had to fight his fatigue during the nearly 54-hour flight. It was all well worth the trouble when Lindbergh landed in Paris on Saturday night, May 21, 1927. More than 150,000 French citizens had gathered to join the celebration of his historic flight. Lindbergh had become an international superstar literally overnight. He came home to an adoring American public that celebrated his fame with a parade through the streets of New York City. One of the most controversial figures in the history of the United States of America was Dr. Jack Kevorkian. He was a pathologist, euthanasia advocate, and author who came into fame during the late 1990s. He died in 2011. Kevorkian was a firm believer in euthanasia for the terminally ill. He designed a suicide machine that helped 130 people end their lives. Kevorkian was persecuted throughout his career as a suicide facilitator and was convicted in 1999 for his involvement in an assisted suicide. He served eight years in prison and was released in 2007 after agreeing to no longer assist with anyone's suicide. 
Kevorkian had a difficult time working as a pathologist at the University of Michigan, where he earned his doctorate degree. He did not see eye to eye with his employers, and chose to leave the hospital to pursue his own interests. In 1987, Kevorkian purchased advertising space in Detroit newspapers as a death consultant. His first known assisted suicide was for a 54-year-old woman who suffered from advanced Alzheimer's disease. Kevorkian was not charged in the case because Michigan did not have a law in place regarding assisted suicide. The state did file murder charges initially, but those charges were dropped. The Michigan Medical Board, however, did strip Kevorkian of his medical practitioner's license. Kevorkian defended himself at subsequent trials by claiming that he took no action to assist in his patient's suicide. He had invented a machine that was designed to be operated by the patient using the machine. Therefore, Kevorkian argued he had no hand in causing the death of his patients. His patients had complete control of the suicide from start to finish. Kevorkian's role in the death was simply to help attach his patients to his machine. The rest was up to them. Some called Kevorkian a raging madman who lost his mind, while others called him an angel for helping to end the suffering of his patients. Long before the women's movement of the late 1960s and 70s, lived a 19th century woman by the name of Susan B. Anthony. Anthony was fighting for women's rights long before the social revolution of 50 years ago. She was born in 1820 to a Quaker family. Quakers are a close-knit, faith-based group of people who live a very simple and strict life. It is a traditional way of life where gender roles are clearly defined. She spent much of her early age fighting for social change. She was an anti-slavery abolitionist, teacher, author, and was a leading figure in gaining women the right to vote and to hold office. The suffrage movement was designed to gain voting rights for women who previously had no voice in government. Another social cause Anthony was heavily involved with was the anti-slavery movement. Anthony made her family farm available for like-minded people to have anti-slavery meetings. She was involved in the abolitionist movement until the end of the American Civil War, when slavery was abolished. She then turned her attention to women's rights. Anthony founded a weekly publication called The Revolution, which she used to publish women's rights literature. The newspaper's motto was, Men their rights and nothing more women their rights and nothing less. In 1872, after touring the country trying to build momentum for women's rights, she illegally voted in the presidential election. She was arrested and fined even though she fought. Anthony never paid the fine. The incident served to bring more awareness to the struggle women had to endure. Anthony fought the good fight until her death in 1905 at the age of 84. She is honored today by the United States Mint with the Susan B. Anthony $1 coin.